In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn all of these parts into a rig for an ATEM Mini Pro. During the pandemic, I was one of those people who went out and bought an ATEM Mini Pro. Everything was going remote, but we still needed a way to bring in production people. One of the first shoots that I used the ATEM Mini Pro on, I didn't have any rigging, barely had any of the right power adapters to connect it. And I remember thinking at the time how, even though it's a really compact device, there's really no way to rig it as a field unit because it's really designed as like a desktop piece, but it's so close in size to be able to be something that could be mounted on a camera. And as I'm looking at my ATEM Mini Pro on the ground and my computer, I'm thinking one of these days, I'm just gonna step on this thing and this is gonna break. So I need to find a way to build a rig so that I can get it off the ground. But also because even though it's really small, by the time you plug everything in, there's a whole lot of power bricks, connectors, cables, switches, routers, like all that kind of stuff becomes really like a permanent setup. So I wanted to find a way to make the ATEM Mini Pro work more as like a field unit like a video village that you could take out, put it on a tripod so you didn't even need a table, switch it on, you're ready to go. And that's this fella. So this unit is fully self-contained. It can run off a single AC power connection, but at the moment I've actually got it running off a V-mount battery. So hence why I can have it um, with no cables attached. And it's running wirelessly through this little router here and I've got a switch inside. And I've also got a Raspberry Pi in the back which is running companion so that I can control that through my phone or my tablet, or even remotely through another computer. I don't really use the switching panel, hence why I was able to mount it vertically and just sort of pull it out of the way. And then all of my switching goes through Companion. All right, so I'm gonna grab another camera. I've made all of the plugs really easy to access because they're vertical, so you can just plug them straight in like that. Switch it on and we're up and running. First of all, we've got a 10 inch Lilliput. I like that because it's around about the width of the ATEM Mini Pro. I just wanted to keep everything as compact as possible. So I've got an articulating screen here. The ATEM Mini Pro for me is really just a box. I mean, if it just had no buttons on the surface, I would probably be even happier because then you could just like completely compact it away. Working our way around, I've got a Teradek Bolt 500 XT. We've got a Teradek Cube 755, which I'll turn on in a sec. I've got a Raspberry Pi, which is still being mounted, as you can see by these elastic bands. I've got a cam link in case I need to take a video out into Zoom or something like that. A V-mount battery on the back, which is powering this whole unit. Now for audio, I've got a Sennheiser G4, which is plugged into microphone two, and I've got a little bit of treatment on that in the actual ATEM software. There's some really great audio Fairfield, Fairlight, Fairlight, why is it light? This tutorial itself is being recorded to a SanDisk SSD. On the inside of here, I have an HDMI splitter, five port ethernet switch, and I've got an ATEM streaming bridge. So at any point I can be streaming a program view out to get around some of the limitations, albeit there's a bit of a delay on it. I've got a USB-C hub, which I can connect straight to my MacBook, which I'll show you in a little bit. And then this GL iNet router is fantastic because it's so versatile. There's so many ways that you can connect to the internet through here, through even like USB phone tethering, through Wi-Fi bridging, gigabit ethernet. You can power it off a USB-C. So it makes powering some of these things possible. Structurally, this is built around a dual rail system. Down the line, if you ever upgrade or don't need this rig anymore, all of these parts that have been used here can be repurposed for something else. And then on the bottom side, I've got another rail system here again with a tripod plate so that I can actually mount this onto a tripod. Like that, and lock it down. No cables getting in the way. The great thing about the rail system is this becomes very modular. For example, I could take the top handle off and I could mount my whole DSLR camera. As well as getting this rig off the ground, I wanted to be able to make this one of the camera positions so that you needed fewer tripods. So this would work well, probably for a fixed camera so it's not bumped. But if you think this is like a wide camera and then other cameras are actually manned. So I can actually pop out the battery here. Don't need that anymore. Because on the rig, we've got a dummy battery, Indie Pro DTAP here. And this DTAP is also built into the rig. For this camera, there's gonna be three connections. We've got the DTAP for power coming off the rig, HDMI obviously, bringing it out. And then I've also got a USB cable because these DSLRs have a way of turning themselves off. 
So if I can connect it into the computer system, then I can actually control it through Canon software and keep it running so that it doesn't stop. So I have this dual razor which just helps bring up the camera so that I can position it somewhere and, and keep the rig balanced. So now I have a camera rig that can be used in a sort of operator mode if you were shooting a live stream from a sort of third person point of view. But I can actually swing the camera around so that it's something that I can use where I'm more like presenting to camera. And so now with the camera facing towards me, I can monitor everything that I need to just below the lens where the multi-view is. I'm fully self-contained. I could like pick this unit up, move it anywhere. I've got a wireless mic. Everything's happening within this unit. And then there's only two other things that you need to make this fully wireless, which is something to see and something to control. And I can do both of those on a tablet or a phone. At the moment, I've got a Cube 755, which is in this rig, and it is encoding video, sending it back through the Wi-Fi network. And then my tablet is on that Wi-Fi network. So I can actually watch the multi-view. Remember we did that um, HDMI split in the back of the rig. And I can now actually control this remotely using a tablet connected to the Pi that is within this whole setup. We go to the keys. Um, we can just play around with different types of keys. We can get the full, down the box in the corner. Uh, I could do a little like very inset here. Everything that you can do on a computer, then you can do on here. And just because we don't really need to be streaming at the moment, it was just for show. Um, I'm going to go off air with that, but I'll keep us recording because that's what this is going to on there. I just want to demonstrate how instant this is. You'll see in the multi-view here, it's like boom, 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 boom. This is all running over Wi-Fi and there's not any delay. So using this sort of rig, you could go anywhere and stream or record. I would love to go to Central Park and just record some music, um, plug in a couple of cameras. Sweet. I don't know, what more do you need than that? So let's take a look at the way in which this rig can be adapted to other production purposes. First one might be an auto cue. Instead of just having this screen here, even though it is low profile, there's times where you may want to actually have an auto cue so that as you're presenting to camera, you can see the screen or text that you need to look at. This auto cue here, which is fairly inexpensive and has been a good purchase off Amazon. I've switched out the six inch rails that were on the top of this rig for some 12 inch ones and I've moved the camera forward so that the front of the lens is at a better place for the auto cue. So now I can actually bring that into play. So this slides in here. Put this lens hood at an angle and then over the lens so that it cuts out any reflections. There's one thing that's missing though, obviously that's the screen. Um, but the reason I got this 10 inch lily put is because not only is it similar width to the A10 Mini Pro, so it stores away in a case, but it also works well in this auto queue. So now I can see my multi viewer in this screen and it looks like I'm looking directly at you because it's a pane of glass, it's taking a mirror image, so we need to flip that. You can do that with an iPad in some auto queue programs, but on this lily put here, I have a function key here so that you can flip the screen. From a normal view, the screen is now back to front, but when I look at it through the mirror, it's the right way around, so I can actually read text, which is really important if you're trying to use this monitor as a, as a computer monitor, because you can actually plug in a screen, so you could be looking at someone through Skype. So this is a really great way to do a sort of self-presentation. I have access to the ATEM keys down here if I did want to switch to the touch of a button. And instead of a multi-view, you could look at your desktop instead if you're trying to look at a um, Zoom call or read some text or a PowerPoint presentation. I have a Raspberry Pi plugged in to three so it could simulate a desktop. And of course, you can change the HDMI out to be full screen. So if you wanted to be able to switch between a desktop view and then a multi-view, you could do that at a touch of a button on here or else through the companion app. So I think this sort of design is going to be really helpful for people who are um, self-presenting or YouTube because it's on a tripod. You can just put it in the corner or you could put it behind your desk or you could be standing and presenting. There's some other auto cues where you've got to take the camera and like mount the camera on the auto cue itself. I wanted one where the auto cue would be mounted on the camera. So that way I can stick with the rails that I've got and sort of slide the auto cue on. 
Let's get this auto cue off and I'll show you a couple of other setups that you might want to use for different types of productions. This is what this looks like as a headless setup. So if you didn't even want a screen in there, you could just monitor from elsewhere. The other way of thinking about this rig is more of like a video village to bring all of your video sources into. And for that, I'd also like a laptop. So I'm gonna show you how to put a laptop onto this rig. I'm gonna get rid of this camera and plug my screen back in because it's nice to see what you're doing. I've had this setup running for about an hour to an hour and a half as I've been recording and setting things up and the battery is getting low. That's a 98 watt hour battery. So probably I would say about an hour is safe. But now I've just switched over to mains, which is great because on this one cable, everything is being powered off, it's still. So I've actually got two of these on stage trays. They're sort of like DJ stands. They're, I think they're only about 15 bucks each, so they're pretty good. I have drilled two holes in them just to move these mount points. You can mount them just through these slats here, but I found like I liked a better spot here and there. So this drilling is probably one of the two things that I did that wasn't just off the shelf. Everything else has been pretty much buy it off Amazon and plug it together and just make sure that you got like the right cable length and all that. I like these six inch rails because it leaves just enough on the front and the back to be able to attach something to. So I'm going to do that with this on stage thing, which I've got a 15 millimeter rail block that's been mounted onto this and screwed in. All right, so just slide that on and then lock it down. Boom. So now we actually have a tray that we can put something on. So I'm gonna grab my laptop. So this fits a MacBook Pro perfectly. I can switch and then I can see it and I can control what I need to from that. With the second plate, I can apply that at the bottom here. Slide that one on, lock it down. Because there's already a USB-C hub in the rig, I can actually just plug in the computer's power adapter and then feed that through to the Mac. And then everything is gonna go through the one connection. Power, as well as internet, as well as audio, what else? Everything is in one cable. I've coiled this up, but it's a six foot cable, which means I can actually put the computer somewhere else if I need to and leave the rig standing. This is plugged into the hub, and then I can just use this one connection to connect the computer. You hear the little boom, and we've got power. But this is actually pretty well balanced, so as long as it's locked down, it's not like pulling too hard on one direction or another. And then the last piece is a stream deck, which is what I use to control this so that I'm not actually having to switch those buttons. I can plug it in, pops up, I'm recording, I can do my key on and off. I've got the Stream Deck, I've got my monitor, and I've got my laptop control. And I think this is great. I've always found that there's never enough space when you go somewhere. But there's one more thing. What about audio? This can also fit the Zoom Live Track L8. And this just slides in there. And this Zoom mixer can actually be powered off the USB-C hub that I've already got in there, and that also connects it to the computer to bring in that bus. Switch it on, and away we go. I now have a 15 inch screen in front of me. What if I wanted to use this monitor as a multi-view? In this rig, I've got a Camlink 4K. Go to VLC, File, Open Network, and under Capture here, I can get an input device, and I'm gonna choose Camlink 4K, open that. If I double click that, make that full screen, so I could use my laptop as a multi-viewer and take away this one. All right, so this shoot is finished. Let's tear this down and see how this packs away. Pelican 1615. This is like my favorite case because this is the biggest regular check-in size for airlines. And apart from ergonomics being great, it just feels solid and it's not that heavy compared to other hard cases. I can now dismount this whole unit from the top, slides right out. And then we're back to where we started with this little guy. The one thing I do do, unscrew the screen. It just packs way better than that. Unplug the HDMI and the power. This base plate here slides right off. This has a flat base. I wanted that so that I could basically sit this on a desktop. If you don't need to tripod mount it, it makes it even smaller. And the, the lesser volume under here means that it sits more compact in the Pelican case. And then this whole case 
it just slides right in there. Screen goes in the back. And then this base plate goes in the case. Now that leaves a whole lot of space for other gear. Normally I have my C200 in here. This is all batteries, mat box, and some screens in here. I have a lot of grip gear, like hand grip stuff, and phone mounts, pot shoe adapters. And then I usually have a bunch of lenses and then either more lenses or some audio gear, depending on what I'm doing. This is taking up probably less than a quarter of a Pelican 1615. And then these rails along the top actually are quite structural in preventing the connections getting pushed up around in the case. And then we can close that down. I love that sound, nice and loud. And then you're ready to go. Lastly, I'm gonna do a tear down for you so that you can see all of the parts that go into making this because you may wanna make something like it. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it's highly customizable. I'll have all the links to these parts and where you can purchase them.